Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about front-end skills. So let's get into it. So the question in question was posted on a video that I made a while back, which is called Why are front-end engineers in such short supply? And I basically state that I don't think that they are. I think that we have a surplus of uh, front-end engineers. Uh, the reason why there are so many jobs in the space is one part, of course, that it's a fairly new area and it's a very big area that it requires a lot of people, uh, but also the fact that most of the front end developers are not really worth the, they're not worth the company's time. Uh, and I will left it unspoken why that is, but I see it's a very similar sort of, sort of trend when you look at say PHP developers or things like that. I, I like to argue, and this is just based on my very personal experience with hiring quite a lot of people over the years now uh, and interviewing a lot of people. There is a, the, there are certain languages, certain communities where the average quality of the software developer is usually higher because usually the people who go into as the, those sorts of languages they are more academically inclined or like they're more engineering type of personalities and so forth. The range varies much more. The fluctuations between in quality of the software developer is much, much, it, the gap can be much greater in things that are more accessible and front-end is more accessible and such as P and PHP is also very accessible in comparison to a language such as Java or C or something like that if that if you may if you if I make myself understood. So the question is because I basically outline a little bit on what I say that it's really hard to find someone with industry grade uh, developer skills. So the question is can you be more concrete about the skills needed to become an industry grade front end developer? It would be really helpful for you if you can list down things one can do to evaluate one's readiness to accomplish complex UI industry the UI industry task with modern JS frameworks. Thanks. Well, uh, this is where I'm gonna scare you a little bit. Uh, I'm not. I'm not gonna scare a junior developer because, like, the the requirements on on a junior developer is fairly low in the front end space in comparison to other areas. But this, like, I, I'll take an example from my own life. Like, I recently. Uh, but went into a new company which uh, where like a new project very exciting for me and this is as a my, my actual title is front-end software developer now I've been a full-stack developer for years but now I'm doing front-end and here's the kicker about that the only difference in terms of what I need to know between that and back end like in the full-stack thing is that I don't do anything really with a secondary language, like everything is in TypeScript. But everything else is pretty much the same. And in some cases, it's actually, like, like the requirements are, in this case, it's actually higher. The requirements on in this company is it's much higher than at my last company. And everything from CI pipelines and like how to work with, uh, in this current case, it's Azure and understanding how deployments work understanding how like CD, CDNs work and uh, like infrastructure and so forth. All of these things and like the different application codes and so forth, all of these things are now relevant for me. And things that, you know, an average small company may not care so much about is also relevant. Things like accessibility, unit testing, um, we're working with TypeScript, and in this case, too, like we have so many different libraries now in, in this company. We don't use Redux. In the last company, we were using Redux, and it's like it's a React stack, and so forth. And then there's a bunch of other things, things like Webpack and different custom plugins and in uh, server-side rendering we're using Next.js and not only Next.js we have our own custom solutions where like we're using native JavaScript to improve the performance in certain spaces which is one of those things where like you've probably seen someone say that oh you don't really have to focus so much about 
uh, so much on like vanilla JavaScript because it's all React or it's all Angular or something like that. Wrong, which is something that I've also told you. The uh, the reason I say that you usually should focus on React or like one of the frameworks is just because when you are a beginner, you have to start somewhere. But now, like I'm literally, literally right now, uh, um, looking at implementations of like in completely vanilla JavaScript implementations where we have glue code that connects our React application with static server-side vanilla JavaScript implementations of certain components on the page because we're not building an entire SPA, we're actually building a static website most of the time with widgets or like components that are made in React and they need to be hooked and they need to be connected through vanilla JavaScript which means that now for like the first time for in a long time uh, I actually can leverage a lot of these patterns that I've learned over the years on how to build my own event listeners or my own controllers and all of this knowledge that I've gathered from say backend work on like a, as an example what is a controller in the MVC pattern now an average like a junior developer or someone who knows has the basics down of MVC will think of a controller as a as a service side thing uh, but that's not necessarily true because a controller is in essence just as a way to connect two pieces of uh, of a contract if that makes sense in the server it's a network request connected to business logic in this scenario it is a component connected to some other component like they, they it's well I'm not saying it's an adapter but I hope that you make me I you understand so for me to make a list like I can't do that in one sitting like this it, because the list is absolutely enormous like everything from uh, like it's large file storage we're using in this scenario because we're version controlling all the files but we didn't do that in the last company uh, and we're like yeah, commit hooks we're using husky uh, what more uh, yeah, we're you again. We are not using one of the standard CSS and JS solutions here. We're using like a smaller library where one of the developers behind that library works with us. Uh, so, w what I'm trying to tell you here basically is that the range of what you would have to know to be effective as a industry grade front end developer, or somebody who's really good, is enormous. Like it's it's like if you want to be a really good front end developer in today's world, I will go as far as to say that I've said in other videos that I think that back end work can be harder in in a sense that at least to get into, uh, because the requirements on front end developers are usually it's fairly low on average. In this case, it's not. It's sky high. Uh, but the like the range of things that you have to learn is so big that uh, if you are good at front end you are in my world going out to be a you're gonna to have to learn a lot more stuff than the average back-end developer ever has to learn uh, and the own I think that honestly the only reason I got this job is because uh, as I've said before the in my world the best so the best front-end developers are full-stack developers because the like the complexity of a front-end application and the, like a front-end product not just the UI code that you are building but like all the things around it, how to create good solutions and like not just the APIs of the browser but as I was saying the controller thing uh, and that's not the only thing like we're using Percy for example for visual regression testing and to end testing we're using Cucumber JS with BDD driven development uh, unit testing with Jest and so forth as I've mentioned like there's so much to it and this is just like this is stuff that like an average front-end developer they don't know a lick of this I interviewed, honest to God, I was part of an interview where we, we simply couldn't hire that person and he had been working for, wow, nigh on 12, 13 years or something like that. He has at least twice the experience level of what I had and he couldn't, like, he, like not even basic questions around promises or how React worked or anything like that. He had no, like, in-depth knowledge of any of this stuff, no knowledge of CSS architectures or anything like that. So, like, you have to understand when I say an industry grade, like, or when you ask, how do I make, how can I get a list of all the things I need to know? I, I will tell you that I can give you, like, a, like, I've given you a few things now, but you, re you I really hope you understand that 
the 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 requirements can be like they can be insane but they can also be like dirt simple depending on what level of company you're applying to and each company has their own idea of like how good does like our uh, how, how, what do we expect of our front end developers i've been in interviews where the interview for the front end position is literally build a small little react application where you grab some data from a network or something like that and that's kind of like and that's like the junior position or like that's all they really wanted and in other cases they give you hardcore computer science questions where you're actually solving algorithmic problems in this interview it was the similar sort of thing the code interview the coding test was fairly straightforward build this application was like a carousel a carousel is not necessarily the easiest thing in the world but it should be accessible etc etc and then we i was interviewed by two very good front-end developers who asked some, as I was saying, some questions. I, I got the same questions as, as this other person, where I know that the average, the average uh, front-end developer is not going to be, they're, they're not going to be able to give an answer to all of these questions because they're fairly difficult. So what I want you to take away from this is that I'll. I can, I can try to put like like it's almost impossible because even if you were to ask if even if we ask the question what do, does an industry grade front end developer need to know uh, you have categories of things there are some things that are absolutely common things that everybody like I mean as a, a dumb example git yes you need to know how git verse works everybody is going to expect that you know how git works but if you're an Angular front-end developer, or if you're a uh, React developer, or like something like that, uh, then there are differences, and it really comes down to understand. I, I will say that this is like the best tip that I can give you: learn one stack really, really well. So if you're in React or you're in Angular or whatever, learn that thing really, really well, and try to understand like all the things surrounding it like webpack and bundlers and so forth and like the native apis uh, such as promises how do they work uh, how like the different function types how do they work es6 versus or even es2000 like es6 versus es5 etc etc and like take it from there and just kind of move into it uh, don't try to create a list of all the things that you have to know because it, because it will take you years to learn all the things to be like a really good like industry level front-end developer and as, as just something to calm you down don't worry if you are a junior software developer or like you're a, like a decent front-end developer even with a few years of experience uh, the the average company are there almost very few of them know what the really good front-end developer looks like and the requirements are usually not as high as you might think. Have a great day.